And let's hope nothing blows up. Come on over here. We're coming on. I'm gonna go through, it's closing. You heard the valve because the valve comes in the open position, so. This video is brought to you by Heatcraft Worldwide Refrigeration. All right, today we are doing a scheduled meetup with the electrician because we're getting ready to replace this evaporator coil because it has several refrigerant leaks and the customer has opted to replace it. In fact, this customer provides their own equipment and they've already shipped me the evaporator. But the new evaporator is gonna be an intelligent evaporator. And in order for an intelligent evaporator, especially that has electric defrost like this one, um, originally this particular evaporator is controlled by the condensing unit on the roof. So the defrost clock and the communicating uh, heater wires and everything are ran from the condensed unit on the roof. But with the new intelligent evaporators, we need a dedicated power source. So I'm meeting with the electrician today. I'm gonna go ahead and install a junction box and have him bring the dedicated power into the junction box. And I'll just mount the box on the wall and tell him this is where I need power. And then when I come in to do the evaporator change out, I just wire into that box and then I'll have him mark the breaker and everything. So I'm um, just gonna go ahead and locate the box and then wait for the electrician to get here. So I'm trying to make my job easier by doing this. So I just mounted a J box where I'd like the power to be. You can see it's like a mess back here. It'll be nice installing this coil with all this stuff. But I wrote on there, 208, single phase, 20 amp circuit. And I just want them to terminate the circuit in there, wire nut it, and I'll take care of the difference or the rest. The old one was right there, we'll end up abandoning that. Now, I don't want them using this box because I'm not changing the coil yet and I need this system to continue running. So currently it's running off the old condensed unit, but the new one, I just need my 20 amp dedicated circuit and then when I install the new coil, we'll run it into it. All right, we are back today. So the electricians ran power for me right back here. Little crooked, but hey, you know, I'll deal with it, we'll get it. So we're gonna, that's my new power for the coil. It's dedicated, 208 single phase circuit because this is a 208 volt electric defrost beer walk-in coil. So uh, working on getting access to the top of the walk-in box right now. And then we're gonna go upstairs and get the condensing unit pumped down because we are not replacing the condensing unit. We're just changing a coil on this job. All right, my condensing unit up here. So again, we are turning this into an intelligent evaporator coil. The intelligent evaporator coil by Heatcraft has um, uh, defrost, solenoid valve, TXV, a smart controller built in. So we have no use for the defrost clock in this condensing unit anymore. So that defrost clock will be gutted from this and uh, it'll have built-in defrost basically. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be pumping this system down uh, and then we'll be cutting the line set loose downstairs, installing the coil, and then uh, vacuuming the system down, changing the dryer before that, sight glass, all that good stuff. And then uh, we'll be starting it back up. So it shouldn't be a huge, difficult replacement. It's just gonna be a little time consuming. All right, so what we do in pumping the system down is we front seat this king valve on the receiver. Now, we don't gotta get all crazy and proper, but for technicalities, the only king valve on a system is on the outlet of a receiver, okay? Um, I know a lot of people use the term, and it's not a big deal. I use it all the time too, but just to be proper, this is the king valve because this shuts down the system. So um, we front seated the king valve, and then what we're doing is we're pumping the system down right now. The refrigerant is stacking. It does not allow it to leave the receiver, so therefore the compressor keeps pumping and it's pulling all the refrigerant out of the low side and out of the evaporator, and it's storing it in the condenser and in the receiver, okay? So systems that are designed properly should have storage capacity for the entire refrigerant charge. Now, um, this low pressure control will very likely be replaced today too because it is a little wonky the way that it's working, so we'll more than likely be replacing that at the same time. But we have pumped the system down. Now what we can do is actually push the contactor in and get it to pull a little bit lower to about five to, you know, four to five PSI, then we'll shut it down. So we're gonna hold in the contactor right now and it's starting to pump down. We wanna just take a little more refrigerant out of the low side than need be. You wanna be careful, especially on scroll compressors doing that because uh, sometimes scroll compressors don't wanna pump down that low. Uh, this is a resip, we should be fine. Now that we have the system pumped down, what we're actually doing is cleaning
closing down this suction service valve. And what that'll do is prevent, uh, when we open the system up to atmosphere, it prevents any refrigerant, I mean, any uh, non-condensables from getting into the condensing unit. Now, one problem that we have in front seating that is it makes it a little difficult, I mean, uh, closing that, is that we still will have technically a little bit of refrigerant trapped right here when we go to change the low pressure control, but it's a minuscule amount. The pressure in the system's at nine PSI at the moment because it's risen just a little bit. But this is a good idea to do as long as you have the valve positioned in a way that you can do that. Um, and then now we can go ahead and vent the remaining gas, which is just vapor residual stuff uh, from the liquid line and the suction line and the evaporator. And we're not contaminating the compressor's oil with uh, oxygen or you know any non-condensables. But this only works in certain situations. This type of valve, uh, we're allowed to do this on because it it reads from this side over here so you just got to be careful about that all right we've got the system pumped down uh, you can see we have zero psi on the low side it's important to make sure the system was running when we did that now depending on if it's really like if there's a lot of moisture in the air or anything like that right now it's very dry where we're at so it's not as critical but you can close these valves down um, it makes it difficult when you're trying to isolate it, but it's nice if you're doing major repairs on the system because if you close that valve down, then nothing's contaminating the oil in the compressor, if that makes sense. But we're all pumped down. We basically have the system open to atmosphere. We can go downstairs now um, and uh, start getting ready to disconnect the coil and go forward with all that. Uh, all right, we have a plan to add a suction line P-trap right here, which is going to make it difficult. But... It's gonna be a bummer brazing up against this stuff, but we've gotta do it. I need a suction P-trap. So we might have to move some stuff around, get it out of the way, use a lot of the Viper wet rag, heat blocking compound, and a lot of actual wet towels and stuff. But that's the plan is to add a suction P-trap to it, so. Got the coil out. So we're hoping that the new one hold, lines right up to the same bolts. That would be really nice if it does. So we gotta figure this stuff out. We'll still have to start moving some things, getting this out of the way, but. Looks decent so far. So what we're gonna do is actually thought of something. We're gonna pre-braze this right here, which would be up against the beer lines. And we're actually gonna make a braze joint up in the attic. We'll cut this up there. That way we're not brazing up against the beer lines. So we've got nitrogen flowing on that guy right now. Got a little step bit on there. And we're gonna braze this up real quick. Using a number two tip, which is more than sufficient for this. Sometimes I'll use a rosebud, but it should be okay this up real quick. Now I am cautious about brazing on top of a beer keg that is pressurized. I'm not applying the heat anywhere where I think it's going to be a problem. You do have to think about that kind of stuff. I usually beat a little bit up just to see when I get the flow, and then just get it to flow around the pipe and pull in. Wearing safety glasses. These are approved safety glasses. They just have a sunglass tint to them. They're made by Bomber. Making sure that it's actually pulling into the joint nice and good. I like to go overkill on the solder my company I can do what I want and I don't mind an added expense for solder if it means that we don't have a leak. That seems like a good joint. We'll do an inspection on it. Looks pretty good to me. Don't see any issues there. Don't see any issues. The camera doesn't want to focus but it looks good to me so let's move on. Okay, we got a whole crew of people working on this right now trying to get this done as fast as possible. The refrigeration lines are in different spots, which is fine. So I'm gonna attempt to bend this one up here and go directly into that. We've already got the suction line hooked up and it's just going into the attic. Now these coils come with an EEV and it's in the open position. So don't apply power, leave it unpowered and you can actually flow nitrogen through the system while you're brazing. So we'll make sure we do that. We'll hook up right here and flow nitrogen in all directions while we're brazing. All right, I got this guy cut and bent. I got my swaging tool right there. Now the NAVAC tool, uh, no affiliation with them, but you want it pushed all the way in 
You push the button and then you stop halfway because it'll split the 3 8 You gotta stop and rotate there. And then there's a little button on the other side Water. that you use to release it. And then you turn it like 90 degrees and finish your swage. That's how it works. So, and that way it doesn't split the pipe. It's not a perfect swage, but it's better than nothing. Yeah. So, it looks pretty decent. Try to get a better view of that. Yeah, it doesn't want to focus, but it's a decent little swage. All right, so we're connected there. Got some heat blocking compound, pulled back the anti-chafe bushing so it doesn't melt. We gotta be careful around that sensor, but I don't think we're gonna hit it. And then we're good here too. So we're gonna braise this up. Is that a road book? No, number two. Good to me. Good action pulling in. Should be good to go. I really do hate cork tape, but the one use that it does have is these sensors. You have to put cork tape on these. Nice and good. We're insulated all the way. I'm gonna pull the uh, nitrogen off and then we're gonna go up top on top of the box and then I gotta braise up there real quick and then we gotta do some work up top, but we're coming along. The drain, I think we're gonna have to do some work because I feel like I don't feel comfortable with how high that is right there. I kind of want to twist this T so that way the drain comes out and then goes straight up and has a little bit more of a pitch. I don't know, we'll figure that out. And then electrical, we got lucky. That tightened the way that we wanted it to go. So that way the electrical condo is just going to come over and hook up to here. Okay, I came upstairs. We got the nitrogen up here because I have to braise in the attic now. We'll come up here and do the dryer in a little bit. And uh, we replaced the low pressure control. It's got a protective bushing in there to be safe. We eliminated the defrost clock and all the extra wires. I still tape everything off even though there's no power going to them. Same thing downstairs. So we're moving along a little bit at a time. Hopefully we'll be done soon. We're still working on electrical and plumbing downstairs. So All right, the line set is kind of a mess up here. I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel because um, we're not, that's not, this is a quoted job and it's very tight with the NTEs and stuff. So. This was not part of my scope of work. We're just hooking up here. I'd love to fix it, but it's just, you know, whatever. I'll put some insulation tape under there. That's about it. In a perfect world, this thing gets redone, but maybe when we change the condensing unit eventually, we can quote to replace the whole line set. So um, cutting it right here, we're going to swage it. I just very carefully bent it just by my hands, just very, very carefully, no kinks. Um, we'll swage this, push it into there, and braise it up. Uh, bring up everything you need. Torches, tubing cutters. I don't think I'll need a 3 8 bender, but I brought it. Insulation tape, swaging tool. You know, try to be as prepared as possible, and then I have someone downstairs that can pass me stuff if I need it. I did my best to deburr the pipe. It's not perfect because it's going down, and we don't want stuff stuck in there. Sanded it up. Got the 7 8 swage on there. This one, too. Even though they don't tell you with this size, I like to rotate it just to be safe. Boom. So it's pretty decent. There's definitely room for improvement with the tool, but you know, it's the only one out there and I like where they're going with it. So good job on the first version of this one. There's a few things I'd like. I think that they should do the whole rotating inside there. 
my buddy Adam from the HVAC Overtime Show said that I guess uh, Upanor makes a PEX expander and it rotates for you and I think that would be very nice with this tool. Now, I realize there's a little drip of solder. You know, I'm not perfect. It's okay though, okay? So let that guy cool off and then we'll insulate it and then get off this roof and hopefully get the dryer changed and the evacuation running. All right, this is a 208 volt system, so you gotta tap the transformer. This is 208, not 240. So I tapped it and let's hope nothing blows up. One over here, we're coming on. I'm gonna go through, it's closing. You heard the valve because the valve comes in the open position. So we're gonna go ahead and set it up, go through the setup steps right now. It's either all eights or all nines, I can never remember. So it's all nines. Okay. messed up. It's taking me forever. It's discovering the equipment. Medium temp electric is what we want. Set it on demand, 404, box temp. They want it about 35 degrees. And I gotta turn on the system upstairs now. And this, uh, the delay just ended and the EXV just opened up. The refrigerant's flowing through, so the fan motors should turn on here in just a minute. I'm just working up. There goes the fan motors. So now we're gonna start getting some cooling in here. So that's good. Super easy to set up the Intelligent, nothing fancy. 
Um, we're gonna let it run, bring the box temp down, and I'm gonna work on hooking these up. Now, I'm not a huge fan of putting these in front of the motors, but that's how the customer wants it, so they take liability for that. All right, these wires are all really short, and that's where these wire strippers I showed in my recent van tour really come in handy, because you can get like on that ground wire and strip it and pull it down. And these Wagos make it really nice too for getting up in here, so. I made the box safe, that way the customer can't stick their hands into the electrical stuff. I do need to go get some covers for these, some blank plates, and then uh, I need to get a blank plate for, actually no, I have a cover for that box. So we're almost there, but we're gonna take a lunch too. All right, system's been running for a bit. I didn't do the rooftop work, but it's looking good. Dryer, put a spoiling catch-all, 083 in. So it's looking good, sight glass is clear. System's just running, we're trying not to, uh, really shut it off we want the box to come down to temp so low pressure control over there yeah looking good it's it's hot outside though it's warm for sure so we're just uh, kind of waiting for it to come down to temp I'm gonna put some electrical covers on all the J boxes inside the box now all right we checked the liquid level on the receiver added gas accordingly the old evaporator coil was leaking so got the refrigerant charge where it needed to be for the head pressure control valve um, as far as this guys go, I want to talk about the intelligence. So, you know, the intelligence is just a smart controller. The biggest piece of advice I can give you if you're installing an intelligence system, a beacon system, um, QRC system, is braze with nitrogen and follow the instructions. Don't over pressurize the system when you're doing nitrogen pressure tests and different things. Trust me, I've made those mistakes and ruined pressure transducers. So, uh, the other tip that I don't think a lot of people know is that the EEV comes in the open position. I already talked about that earlier in the video, but it comes in the open position, so do not apply power. Leave the power off, do all your brazing, put your nitrogen on the liquid line, let it flow all the way through the suction line, come out the top on the roof, do your brazing, and then when you apply power, you'll hear the EEV close, okay? Um, it's not really something you can get to happen you know, when you're, uh, when you're working on it, it's kind of difficult to get it to open up unless you get it to go into cooling mode, right? So yeah, we're waiting for this guy, it's in its delay right now. But um, I mean, really, all you gotta do is like we already did. Oh no, we don't wanna go into service mode. So let me get out of that. I don't need to go into that. So if you just go to monitor, um, there we go. Sounds like it's about getting ready to open up. So box temp is 46, the set point's 35. Uh, cooler 1A. Operating mode, so no, it isn't on yet, but it'll turn on in just a minute. We're just waiting for a delay. Time set, there's really nothing crazy. Everything is pretty darn easy. Superheat is uh, set at 10 degrees. I already set, I already checked that. Um, you can see it's still pumped down right now at 13 PSI. Uh, EXV is open, zero steps. So it, these things are rather easy to work on. I don't, you know, there's not really much going on. I think it was important that I added a suction line P-trap. The old system didn't have that. Those help for oil return, especially for long line set runs. Um, yeah, and that's it. I'm not a huge fan of these guys, but you know, that's what the customer wanted. So I put them back in just like they had them. And that's it. We're gonna wrap this one up. We'll uh, catch you on the next one. Not too bad, right? Now, you know, this wasn't a full system replacement. I would have loved to have changed the line set, the va or the condensing unit and all that, converted the refrigerant over to 448A, but that's not what the customer wanted. This particular customer just wanted to change the evaporator coil, so that's what we did. It was a leaking evaporator coil. So we utilized the existing line set, just made a new connection, did add a new P-trap to it, um, and that's where we went. Now, when you're doing the intelligence stuff, like I mentioned in the video, you know, I had to have the electrician get involved because you need an independent power source. Unlike the old equipment where the evaporator was controlled by the condensing unit, this one, you need to have an independent power source. If you open up the installation and operation manual, it specifically says that inside the manual. Okay. But other than that, it's really not that difficult. You install it just like a normal evaporator following best practices of brazing with nitrogen. I will say it's a little bit more important when you're dealing with systems that have electronic expansion valves because the orifices on those, just trust me, you want to put or you want to be brazing with nitrogen to try to protect your system, okay? Um, as far as setting up the intelligent control, you know, really nothing too crazy about it. Uh, it's pretty user friendly. Just kind of follow through some basic steps. Uh, one thing that I will say, if my customer was to allow me to install the web server card on the intelligent evaporator, 
we would be able to unlock the information in the intelligent evaporator and access it remotely. The customer could set it up to where they get notifications if something happens. I could set it up to where I get notifications. We would be able to remotely log into the system and see live what's going on. Um, but all we have to do is install the web server card and then bring internet access into there. We have an ethernet port on this guy. Um, we could set it up, but it's a matter of getting the customer to approve that. And my customers tend to be very reluctant to install internet controlled devices in their kitchens. Um, I get it. You know, people are afraid of security, um, you know, data information, whatever, you know, but it's just one of those things that we have potential right here. You know, just a simple web server card. I've had this sitting in my office for a while now and I cannot get people to approve me to install it, but it could unlock so many capabilities of the intelligent evaporator. But other than that, you know, there really isn't too much difficult about these intelligent evaporators. They're super easy to install. I really, really appreciate, and I didn't point out in this video, but I do really appreciate on the new uh, Heatcraft evaporators, they have a whole new um, fan motor bracket assembly that allows you to pull the entire evaporator fan motor out with the blade still attached and the bracket attached. Super easy. And I really do appreciate that. Um, and you basically just pull off the fan guard and then the, the evaporator bracket motor blade, everything just slides right out as a cassette. I think that's a really cool feature on these new heat craft evaporators. So I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. If you haven't already, please consider uh, subscribing to the channel. Uh, there's a couple different ways if you're interested in doing so and supporting the channel. Uh, you can just simply go to the website, hvacrvideos.com. Uh, we have merchandise available. Um, if you're interested in purchasing any tools, truetechtools.com. Uh, I have an offer code, big picture, one word. Uh, you get an 8% discount on majority of the items on their website, and I get a small commission from that. Uh, and then there's PayPal, Patreon, and YouTube channel memberships. There's links in the show notes if you want to dive into any of that. But the easiest way to support this channel is simply just watch these videos. That's, that's the easiest way. Leave a comment down in the bottom. Let me know what you think. I really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video. Thank you so very much. And remember, like I say in a lot of my videos, be kind to one another. This world is crazy and we could all use a little more kindness in our lives, every one of us. Just remember, you never know what the other person's going through, not just to find someone being a jerk to you, but you know, sometimes if someone's a jerk, just brush it off, you know, be kind to one another. I really, really appreciate you and uh, we will catch you on the next one.